Well, that didn't work. Okay, it is working. I had no visual there for a second. Repo Man 64, how are you guys doing today? I wanted to go into a little bit about the stories that we read in the Bible and their significance. What's the purpose? Why do we have all these stories? And if you read in Psalm 90 and 9, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. Justice is shortened to the days of rebellious Israel. Halting place become a graveyard. They mark their much by the tombs they left behind them. Because of the penal sentence, their days were dried up and their lives were washed away. So... I should have read the next verse, but I had to read that. This is a exploratory of the King James Ver Version Bible. This is a uh, uh, just like an explanation of it that I'm reading. Uh, this is somebody's understanding, and I'm I'm just rereading it to you. They're not giving me who it was, um, where I would tell you, but somebody wrote this. And it is a good uh, good understanding of of the uh, the Psalm ninety uh, nine. So it says here, we spend our years as a tale that is told. Yeah, not their days only, but their years flew by them like a thought. We've heard that before in today's society. Swift as a meditation. Rapid and idle as a gossip's story. So basically, what that par that uh, that passage is reading is that all these stories that we read in the Bible have meaning. They're not just there, and then you don't dig into the story to try to get a deeper meaning. That's why they're there. Their lives back then were stories to be told for now and into the future. So with that in mind, think about, again, you know, Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Those stories are accurate, and they do apply to different groups of people. Luke being the bride, the escaped bride, Mark being the tribulation saints, and those two groups are being raptured now. Those two groups are going up to heaven. They're going to the third heaven, and they're going to paradise. Uh, that's been proven over and over again. I think it's, uh, I don't remember which which uh, passage it was. I think it's 2 Corinthians 12, maybe, where it says, I knew a man above 14 years, just talking about the two different groups. One goes to the, the third heaven and one goes to paradise. So, all of these stories are important. They're not here for, like, just mild reading they're here because they're explaining things. And now that I know about the three different groups of people, um, we learned all about that. Uh, Charles over at the Sword of God has some long videos, but they're very explanatory, and uh, he takes a lot of time out to help us understand what's going on. Because this is the time. We're in it. This is the time now. The end is here. Um, he believes he's found the date which is kind of exciting. Um, 9.1 earthquake just hit over there in New Zealand. I think earlier today it was a 7, and then there was an 8. I mean, it's just, it's, this is happening now. This is happening now with all the signs we have going on. So, now that I know about the three different groups of people, I can go through my Bible, just like you can, and I would suggest you do, and please, in the comment section, leave me some more examples. I'd love to talk about it, um, these three groups of people. So here we have the story of Noah's flood. Let me switch screens here. I'm learning how to do this stuff. It says, this is in um, Genesis 9. Well, I start out at 18, but 920 is the uh, shame, Noah's shame. So we're going to read this. It says, and the sons of Noah that went forth of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. 
and Ham is the father of Canaan. These are the three sons of Noah, and of them was the whole earth overspread. So those three sons had children, and we all came from them after the flood. God's explaining. So we go forward. Noah spent 120 years building the most incredible boat to house every single animal, two of some and seven of others, the clean ones and the dirty ones. And he did all that on faith and then he was sealed in an ark and seven days later it began to rain so we have another story here of three and i want to bring it up because it's this is littered throughout the entire bible and when you start paying attention to this stuff you can see what group you're in what group do you belong to are you a luke are you a mark or are you a matthew when you say nobody knows the day to the end of the world you're right you're a matthew you don't that's not a good place to be you don't want to be there. You might want to read Amos 3, 7, because it completely contradicts that statement. Unless you understand the Bible, which is, it's written in a fashion to where when you do gain insight and understanding, you'll never make that comment ever again. Because Amos 3, 7 says, everything will be revealed to you. Revelation 3, 3 says, if you don't know, I will come on you as a thief. So... That's exactly what's going to happen to the Matthew group. So here we go. And so he's done. He spent 120 years building this boat. He doesn't really know to do much else. Um, we know from this passage I'm about to read that he's, he's, I don't want to call him an alcoholic. I mean, I, I respect the guy for what he did. And that was quite a task that he just went through. And now he's on a planet with his three sons and their, their three wives and his wife. That's it. That's all that's on the planet, the entire planet. So, I mean, you got to get, you got to think about that for a second. How huge is that? That's that's huge. Like, there's nowhere to go and find anyone. You get to like start everything, write the laws. Anyway, sorry. It says, and Noah began to be a husband man. What's a husband man? I'm a, I'm a husband. I go wash the car and uh, go to work every day and buy food and help around the house. And I'm a husband. That's what I do. You know, I, I, I fix things. I, I, I do the husband stuff. And so he did. That's exactly what he did. And Noah began to be a husband man and he planted a vineyard. The Bible cuts it short. You know what he did. He planted corn. He planted everything. He, he probably even took seeds with him. doesn't record that, but how did he plant a vineyard unless he had seeds? So um, he plants a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered in his tent. I was young once. I don't remember ever doing that, but you've gotten... You drank too much and you wound up somewhere <laughs> you probably shouldn't have. That's one of the sins that you'll have to deal with, you know, later. But, so, he's lying naked in the tent. What happens? What happens next? Ham, the father of Canaan, they really want to specify that Ham is the father of Canaan, by the way. He saw his father's nakedness and told his two brothers that weren't in the tent, that were outside. He should have covered his father. He should have respected his father. That phrase alone has so much meaning, like so much meaning, just like our father in heaven. I don't want to compare it exactly because I, I've heard this spo uh, taught before. Basically, God's nakedness is us. He loves us so much. And Satan, I think, really believes that God loves his children so much that he'll never bring wrath on this planet and satan obviously we all know is sadly sorely mistaken so anyway so shem and japheth out of complete respect for their father who was lying there drunk couldn't move naked put a put a sheet on their shoulder and walk backwards they didn't want to see their father's nakedness they they had high regard for their father um, this was not a laughing matter. Their father, and they respected their father. They, he went through this whole thing. God saved them. They knew what, what relationship that Noah had with God. They respected their father. 
Not all children respect their father. You know that. So they walk with their faces were backwards, so they couldn't see their father. And they put a sheet over him. And they did not see their father's nakedness. And Noah woke up from his wine, which woke up in the morning, probably with a hangover, and knew what his younger son had done unto him, which somebody told him, obviously, or maybe he woke up through it, or I don't know. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall be his brethren. So remember that as we go into this teaching. He is a servant of servants, okay? Three groups of people. There are three groups of people. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem. Shem was the oldest brother. Shem is also an example of the bride, the escaped bride. And Canaan shall be his servant. Canaan, again, is Ham. He is the father of, of uh, Canaan. Ham is the father of Canaan. So now, we have Ham being, or Canaan being, the servant of Shem. Okay? And Noah lived at... Hold on a second. The servant of God. God? Oh, I missed a part. Sorry. <laughs> and God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. So Canaan is the servant of servants. What does that mean? If Japheth was enlarged by God, and he shall sleep in the tents of Shem. Yeah, I know I had to work through this because it was like, Mind-boggling, but and he sleeps in, or he dwells in the tents of Shem. Who's the boss? Who's the leader? Who's the one up first? Shem. He owns the tents that Japheth stays in, and Ham is the servant of Japheth. And it says that he will be the servant of servants, which means that it doesn't specifically say that, but it makes sense that Japheth is the servant to Shem. Um. So, yes, the bride is, what did uh, Charles say? Charles say the bride escapes. We're calling it an escape. The Bible calls it an escape, not a rapture. That's why people are arguing there's one rapture, because the Bible teaches that. But there is an escape, just like uh, Bar uh, Bar 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 Barabbas mispronounced his name, just like Barabbas, he escaped at the last second. He was standing right there. He was sweating bullets, man. He's standing next to Jesus. He knows Jesus didn't do anything. And he's just standing there going, they're going to make, they're going to kill me because this guy's innocent. And then he escapes, doesn't he? He, just, he gets out of it just right there, right at the last second. He must have been, he must have dropped to his knees. He, I mean, holy monkeys, that was, that was, uh, a great escape right there, wasn't it? Just like us, we'll be in the great escape. We're no cleaner than uh, Barabbas, 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 sorry about that. We're no cleaner than him, but we're going to be involved in the great escape. So there you go. You're three again, and I'm going to keep looking for more examples of three. You notice one son laughed at him. This is the Matthew group. They are punished they're punished they are going they're going to go into the uh the millennium or the lake of fire there's a judgment there's a white judgment throne that they have to go stand in front of but the bride makes this great escape and quite frankly so does uh so does the mark group they get raptured it's a number which no man can count the bride is a thousand times a thousand and thousands and thousands somewhere between 100 and 200 million people so Keep that in mind, family, as you read, you're going to see the three groups, and you're always, always going to see two of them separated from one. And of the two, one of them escapes somehow. You'll always see that. You'll see it on the cross with Barabbas and the thief that went to paradise. What's paradise? 
That's where the Mark group is going. And then you'll see the thief that just reviled Jesus all the way to the end. Just like Ham did. The father of Canaan. So, no different. It's the same story. God has been trying to tell us this stuff over and over again. So, I know the biggest videos on YouTube are those videos that give you the date of the end of the world. Um, Charles over at the Sword of God, I believe, has figured it out. I know it. I know that date, and it's not very far away. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to keep consulting with Charles and, um, of course, all the credit that uh, if anything found, I will give to Charles. And I'll make, he makes big, uh, big videos, two or three hours now. You should watch them because it's just dripping with information. It's really good, but I don't know. Some people don't have that attention span or the time. I do, but some people just don't. So I'll consolidate it on this channel. And I'll tell you about it, and I'll just give you the date. Um, our date, I believe, is correct, or his date. I said our, but his date, actually, I believe, is correct. Um, you've heard so many dates in the past, haven't you? But how many of you went to your knees because of that date? How many of you went to a quiet place by yourself between you and your father and accepted Jesus into your heart and asked him for forgiveness for what you've done? Was that date so bad? No. If it weren't for those dates, who are those people that are going to stand out there and mock and scoff? They're all over YouTube. They're laughing at you. Your date was wrong. Ha, ha, ha. You can't have scoffers if you don't have seekers. Don't, be, don't fulfill the prophecy yourself. Don't be a Matthew. Don't be the thief on the cross that reviled Jesus. Don't be a ham. Keep searching. Keep seeking. And pray to God for discernment. Once you're saved, all you can do is go up from there. There are people who are saved. They're going into uh, going into the thousand-year millennium. I got that from uh, Michael Pearl's channel. You can go in there and get this really cool calendar. It's seven years long. I think that perhaps Charles is correct about his 14 years. But at any rate, it gives a very good explanation of what's going to transpire. And once you become a Matthew and you start searching, you go, wait a minute, Amos 3.7 says, I will know. You'll read that and go, why can't I know? You know, so you'll skip on up to being in first place, just like uh, Shem was. He was in control of the tents that Japheth stayed in, and he had servants. Canaan, the children of Ham. So your three is always in front of you. And if you guys know of any other threes that I haven't discovered yet, please put them in the comment section because I will study it and I will come on here and I'll talk about it and uh, I'll give you credit too because I don't want to be that guy. So Repo Man 64, like, share, comment, and subscribe. We'll talk to you guys later. Have a blessed evening.